You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. should be over the things that happened to me. I'm to blame. It has to be my fault. Why else would it have happened? These are just a few of the statements many clients have said to author and mental health professional Kelly James over the years. Kelly James, the host of Why Aren't You Over This by Now, kept searching for something that would help her feel better after things that happened in her personal life. Finally, she found a way to heal her past in order to love her future and is here to share her discoveries and help the lives of others. So please welcome the host of Aren't You Over This By Now, Kelly James. Welcome to the show. You're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. You're listening to Why Aren't You Over This By Now? So I have a book by the same title, Why Aren't You Over This By Now? And the first five people who email me will get a free copy mailed to them. The email address is whyaren'tyouoverthisbynow at gmail.com. Or the book can be purchased at whyaren'tyouoverthisbynow.org. And I am very excited for my guest today. Her name is Alina Garbus. Alina, welcome. Hi, so good to be here. So you live in a different time zone. What time is it there? (laughs) I do. It is currently 9 o'clock p.m. and I am in Scotland. Yes, you are in Scotland. So this is very exciting that um, you are on the show. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, your credentials? Yes. So um, I am a certified EMDR therapist. I'm also um, a certified trauma uh, specialist. I predominantly work with trauma, but I also do um, coaching. And um, yeah, and I do online therapy 100% of the time. Um, So I guess this is what the show will be about. Yeah, we're really excited to hear about online therapy and how it works. Would you give your uh, email address or your website for people to be able to contact you? Yes, my website is alinagarbuz.com, and my email is hello at alinagarbuz.com. And Alina is A-L-I-N-A-G-A-R-B-U-Z. So, Alina, I know that on your website, people can register. Can you kind of talk them through that process? Yes, so I have a a very beautiful website, and um, on the website, people can kind of scroll through and learn a lot about what I do. There's um, an opportunity to sign up for a free 20-minute consultation, which I love doing with people. And the whole purpose is to, you know, um, to listen to people and get to know them. And really, my goal is to help them um, help them figure out if they want online therapy, in-office therapy, and potentially refer them to a great therapist if they cannot work with me. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and shift gears because I want people to know how we know each other. I am a university professor, and Alina was a student in one of my very first classes. And it was really funny because she sat in the back of the class and basically argued with me the entire semester, (laughs) which I really thought was funny. Didn't you? Didn't you argue with me? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I worked at Shadow Mountain then. And that was my first experience, real experience with reactive attachment disorder and severe trauma. And so, you know, uh, what we were learning in class was just, uh, you know, challenging everything I've ever heard. And uh, but it changed how I did my career. 
Yes, because you, Shadow Mountain used a behavioral approach and I was coming and teaching class from a neuroscience approach, kind of how the brain processes trauma and how to heal the brain. So that it was a great experience and we've been friends ever since. So yes. Alina, t- yes, can you t- tell what it's like to do therapy online in uh, Scotland? Yeah, so uh, last year, midway through the year, we had an opportunity to move to Scotland for nine months to do, you know, work on our degrees. I'm in a PhD program right now. And so I took the, you know, the transition and moved to online therapy. Um, At first, it wasn't so easy because I had to learn how to use technology. (laughs) But after, you know, just a few months of practice, it became a nice, smooth transition. And I love it. Um, so, you know, um, I guess let's start with why online therapy, um, right. Yeah. Um, I guess I want to share this story. I've had a coach, uh, coach Sheba for two years. We both met her, Kelly and I met her at our coaching training and I did a telephone coaching with Sheba for two years and it changed my life. Um, And so one of the reasons that I was encouraged to transition to online therapy was because of that experience and how powerful it was for me. And so I took a lot what I learned from that into my own practice now, um, doing both trauma and coaching um, online. So what does online therapy actually mean? Well, it could be many things. It's a video conferencing. It could be texting. It could be uh, emails, and it could be phone calls. There's also other um, definitions of that. I personally only do phone sessions in video conferencing. Um, every state uh, has different guidelines and rules for this, so you want to check out your state and, you know, what's going on there with that. But I am licensed in both Texas and Oklahoma, and uh, they're very open to you know, all forms of online therapy. But with that said, what happens is that I meet clients from Tulsa, Oklahoma, or anywhere in Oklahoma and Texas via um, uh, conferencing. So we meet through a portal. Uh, It's a HIPAA-protected, highly encrypted portal called Advanced MD, and we conduct our sessions. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of just the start of that. So what do you notice the pros of doing online therapy are? So the pros, of course, are convenience. Um, The pros are that, you know, you don't have to drive to an office, that you can get out of bed, and if you're having a very hard day, you don't have to leave your home. You can, you know, connect with your therapist online. Um, The pros are also having your dog sit on the bed with you or on your lap. And, you know, um, when I meet with my clients, they have their puppies or their cats. They have their coffee. And they're in the comfort of their safe home. And that is one of the greatest pros. And what about the cons? For you personally, what have you noticed the cons are for online therapy? And the cons, of course, are the occasional, you know, hiccups with connection, um, which uh, fortunately and surprisingly, um, I have not had. And even being living internationally for the time being, um, you know, so that kind of gives you a little testimony of how incredible Wi-Fi and technology is these days. Sure. And you mentioned coaching. We are both um, certified professional coaches. How do you incorporate coaching into your online therapy? So coaching, coaching is kind of something that hugs therapy for me. You know, coaching is a huge um, hope filled approach that I use when I do trauma therapy. And we can actually talk a little bit about it. Sure. 
Yeah, we'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. You're listening to the show. Why aren't you over this by now? Be sure to stay tuned and listen more about online coaching. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. An international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion-emitting FDA-approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Why Aren't You Over This By Now? You're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James, and I have a guest from Scotland, Alina Garbuse, and she was talking about how coaching hugs therapy. So would you (laughs) say more about that, Alina? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we both did our certification, became certified professional coaches uh, a while back. And, you know, uh, predominantly I work with uh, complex trauma, structural dissociation, just um, very difficult uh, stories. And so what I have noticed in my own personal practice is that coaching, professional coaching has become like a hug for therapy. Um, and I integrate both of the practices. They're like two different arts that you integrate together and it helps my clients. You know, we, we focus on reprocessing their past, the traumatic experiences of their lives, but also use coaching approaches to help them move forward, you know, and build the futures that they, you know, want for themselves after they heal the trauma that you know, has been part of their life for so long. Sure. And you and I learned in coaching that coaching is typically present day forward for people and therapy is present day backwards. So what a great way to incorporate both Mm -hmm. to heal the past and then help them look forward. And you talked about you're an EMDR certified therapist. You're also a consultant in training. So how do you do EMDR online? Yeah, so that um, that was a great novel experience for me. I have been practicing EMDR since I started in this career. Um, EMDR is probably one of my favorite tools for working with trauma. Uh, I have both experience in my personal life and I have seen countless of lives changed because of the EMDR tool. So EMDR, you know, just a little refresher for the audience, um, sure. uses uh, different, you know, eye movements, but also tactile buzzers that people can hold in office therapy, and it creates bilateral stimulation, you know, uh, in order to help clients go into reprocessing. So online, 
um, over video conferencing or through the telephone, what I have learned is to teach my clients to create their own bilateral stimulation through tapping. Um, they can also do eye movements on the screen. Um, they can do butterfly hugs. They can do tapping with their feet um, and different ways to produce bilateral stimulation using their own body. Uh, one of the kind of the great things about that is that uh, my clients and myself started noticing how the body leads and the mm -hmm. body is able to create uh, this bilateral processing and it actually empowers clients to see that, hey, I have inside of me what I need to heal. You know, as, as much as I love the external tools that we use in office, um, teaching people how to create their own bilateral simulation has been just transforming for, you know, the practice because it really does, um, you know, focus you on, you know, maximizing and empowering people to believe in, in the healing power stored inside of them. I think that's really great about teaching them to use this because clients come in to, you know, to my office once a week and we use EMDR, but what do they do during the time from appointment to appointment and teaching them how to do tapping? If nothing else, just to calm down anxiety, if they have that, that's a great way. Can you kind of describe um, for the audience, since we're not visual, what a butterfly hug is? So a butterfly hug is really you just hugging yourself. Uh, right Crossing cross arms. Cross. Yeah, crisscross mm -hmm. your Crossing arms. arms. And you just tap back and forth, right, left, right, left. Now what we do is when we create the bilateral, uh, bilateral stimulation through tapping, we then engage diaphragmic breathing. So what mm. that does is it, you know, engages your entire body to create this bilateral stimulation and the deep breathing, they connect to help calm down your nervous system and then allow for you to focus on traumatic stimulus, the target memories, and then go into the reprocessing that happens with EMDR therapy and other trauma therapies. Right, because like we know as trauma therapists that the body keeps the score written by Bessel van der Kolk that mm -hmm. our body also stores all of those trauma memories. So that's a great way to do that. And so for you personally, what has your success rate been different from in office therapy and online therapy using EMDR? I think it's just been different. I like both. And when I'm in office, I love to have the tools that come with having an office, you know, but online therapy, um, it teaches me to, to go back to trusting the body and trusting that every single client I meet has their own internal healing, um, you know, like hard drive or however you want to say sure. that. And, and it really does empower people. So um, so based on my clients who have both had me as an in-office therapist and online therapist, they tell me that it's the same. Um, they notice how actually when they do their own tapping, their body will speed up when they are reprocessing, slow down when they're in the part where, you know, they're relaxing and the memory is becoming, you know, consolidated and, um, you know, resolved. And so it's kind of it's really cool to see how their bodies manage and lead them and guide them. And I am, I'm just a guide. I'm a facilitator, right? Like we talked about in our clients, um, you know, we just help them through this process. And um, it, it's pretty cool. That That's amazing. And so how, what are your sessions like? Because I do, typically I'll do two-hour sessions with new EMDR clients because it just catapults you ahead and gets so much of the work done. So we'll find out what Alina does when we come back. You are listening to Why Aren't You Over This By Now on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. Stay tuned to find out how Alina does online EMDR therapy. 
master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. Why aren't you over this by now on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio? I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. And before break, Lena was going to answer how she actually conducts an EMDR session online. So, Lena, could you share that? Yeah, so typically my sessions are about 45 to 50 minutes long for a single session and for reprocessing sessions about 90 uh, to 100 minutes. Um, And so for the single session, you know, what we do is we prepare for the reprocessing sessions. And when we go into reprocessing sessions, the reason why they're longer is because we don't ever want to stop when your brain wants to keep going. And so uh, I love doing 90-minute sessions. I feel like that's a great time. Um, Now, I'm sure my clients all feel exhausted (laughs) at the end of it, you know, so I tell them to go take a really good long nap, have a snack, and maybe take a bath. (laughs) But um, 90 minutes is usually what we go for. Yeah, that after the first few, I tell clients, go home, eat some good protein, drink a lot of water and go to yeah. bed. You'll feel fine in the morning, but your body's just getting rid of all that old junk. So, you know, you and I have talked about the current state of online therapy. What are the numbers? What do you think the people that are participating in online therapy? You also told me about a Facebook group that I'd like you to share. Yeah, so, you know, I joined a Facebook group, and I think it's got over 10,000 members, um, and it's just current therapists who are uh, transitioning to online therapy, adding online therapy, and I think it's great. Um, And one of the reasons why, despite, you know, some criticism out there is because whether you want to go online therapy full-time, part-time, just offer it to your clients, even if you have an in-office, you know, um, it, it, room, it is because it gives people options. And, mm. you know, options is never a bad thing. We want options, especially in a world with increased anxiety and depression, you know, and just a a larger demographic, you know, the millennials who, you know, um, and, you know, the younger generation who are more used to um, telephones and they're more comfortable with online, um, just online portals. I think it's great to offer more options. It does not take away from in-office therapy. It gives a new angle. Um, And why not, right? We want people to be able to get mental health services. 
Sure. I just read an article. (laughs) I just read an article Mm -hmm. about uh, millennials and how there are like 73 million millennials. And one of the trends is that they are now um, doctoring themselves, meaning that they can Google anything and find out answers before they even seek a, a professional. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, I typically will get emails from the younger generation and in the emails they'll say I think I have this and this and this and this but can we do a consultation so that you can tell me what you think I have and I usually respond with you know let's do a consultation but then let's do an actual assessment session because it takes time you know Um, but yes um, with that said though I think that we do live in a society where therapy is less stigmatized. And so young people um, are more open to therapy. People of all ages in general are open to therapy. And so when we have a larger, I guess, audience, we want more options. We want greater accessibility for all types of people. And so I think online, I think text therapy, I don't know how that works. But hey, if it's going to help somebody, why not? Right. I I agree completely. And I think, you know, most therapists do daytime office hours. I do some in the evening and I've wondered about the clients that have to leave work. And so it's a two hour turnaround for them because 30 minutes driving to the office, the hour session and then 30 minutes driving back. And what I'm hearing you say, this cuts down on time that they're away from their job. Absolutely. And I work with a lot of, you know, doctors and medical professionals and people who travel. And so, you know, it's really nice to be able to be more accommodating, you know, and in the end of the day, what, what is it that we want? We want people to be healthier so they could be happier and happy people create happy families, create happy communities and, you know, a better world. (laughs) Sure. And I notice when some clients come in to the office, I can kind of rate their anxiousness. And so there are sometimes in the beginning of the session, there's a few minutes of just chit chatting. And I use that as a way to calm them down. But you told me something interesting about how you can go straight into sessions. Can you say more about that? Yeah, uh, I have noticed that doing telephone sessions, Um, and this is just an observation that typically clients don't have that, um, you know, beginning session anxiety because maybe they're not looking at you and they're not distracted, you know, they're ready for the session. And so we can just jump into, you know, um, to continue from where we left off the last week. And so which that sometimes you know, for me, cuts down um, how much time we spend chit-chatting um, or as necessary for that. And, you know, to be honest, I've actually noticed that, that with video conferencing as well, even though we do see each other. But I think a big reason for that is, you know, I, I've said before, uh, I've read that our senses, our visual senses dominate 60% of, you know, our experience. So I think sometimes when we cut off, you know, the visual aspect, we're able to tune in more into, you know, what we're hearing and how we're thinking and how we're feeling. And I noticed that from my experience. I don't know how it is for others, but I think it's just something to consider when people are afraid to sometimes, you know, not have that part of their session. Sure. You know, before you mentioned HIPAA, and HIPAA, I think everyone probably knows what HIPAA is. It's the Health Insurance Portability and Accessibility Act. So we have to keep, we're required to keep all personal records private. And so you use this advanced MD. Can you tell uh, the audience how you your patients or your clients can connect to that and after the break you can share how people can connect and get on electronically through your patient portal 
So I would appreciate that. And we'll talk more about that. And I also use electronic records through therapy appointment, which I think is a great site to help clients sign on and they don't need to contact me. They can just sign on electronically. So we will talk more about that after break. You're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio to Why Aren't You Over This By Now? And I am your host, Dr. Kelly James. Be sure and stay tuned so you know how to go through Elena's patient portal. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. You're listening live to Why Aren't You Over This By Now on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, we were talking with Alina about her patient portal and how all of her records are electronic. And so, Alina, would you share how uh, clients can use your patient portal? Yeah, so I use Advanced MD. Um, It took me a couple of months to learn how to use it. But it's um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, well, it's colorful and pretty, but you know that doesn't matter <laughs> as much as that it is HIPAA compliant. Um, it's a HIPAA compliant platform for mental health and medical health users, um, and it uses, um, according to them, one of the highest encryption for you know video conferencing. Um, also, uh, another platform that you can look up is DoxyMe, but I use Advanced MD. So clients just go online on my website or through Psychology Today, and they can create their own accounts and book sessions online at Advanced MD. And through their patient portals, they actually fill out forms. They can message me. Um, It's very clean. Um, all forms are signed electronically, so, you know, we don't ever have to print out paper, which is nice, you know, and then we also, through the portal, they get invitations to join online mm-hmm. sessions through the phone or through the uh, video conferencing. So it sounds really user-friendly, which is appreciated. Yes. Uh I Mm -hmm. use that therapy appointment, and it's very user-friendly, too. And so if someone's using an online therapist, wants to use an online therapist, it's important that they understand that they need to find one that uses HIPAA-compliant applications of some sort Mm -hmm. to do that. So how would you suggest people go about finding an online therapist? Well, fortunately, nowadays, because, you know, so much, um, so many health services are moving to offer online, you know, connection as well. 
um, there are many platforms. For instance, doxy.me is actually free. Um, and I've heard very good things about it, you know. And so what you want to do is, you know, whether through Psychology Today or, you know, org, when you find a therapist who you feel like has the credentials that you need, um, you just contact and ask them if they provide online therapy, you know, and, um, and, you know, a lot of therapists, even if they do not, it's not difficult for them to get on one of these platforms. So we definitely live in a time where this is more accessible. Okay. And what are your recommendations for the client? Because you've said you offer this consultation. Why is that important for a client to have that opportunity? You know, so online therapy is obviously not going to be for everyone. You know, um, it's very important to have a safe place when you do therapy. And, you know, for a lot of people, they do have a safe place, and for a lot of people, they do not. And this is where the office is just um, that place, that incredible, magical safe haven for people. You know, and so when I talk to people, I usually ask them about, you know, what their symptoms are, what they're looking for, but also do they have a safe place? Do they have somewhere they can go, you know, whatever is safe to them. And also, you know, how they feel with online. You know, some people I've talked to, they don't feel comfortable with online. They don't feel comfortable with technology, you know. And so I refer them to other therapists who um, will be able to help them. So it just, it's all about preference, you know. And, um, and then I have some people who, only wanted in office, but then realize that they can never get to the office because of their schedules. So they give online, you know, a shot. And so, you know, this is one of the reasons why I do consultations, just to give people a chance to talk to somebody, but then to refer them. And fortunately, um, I know the best therapists in both Tulsa and Frisco, Texas, and, um, you know, so it's great to be able to talk to people, create a relationship, but then to help, you know, connect them to a potentially um, life-changing therapist, life-changing therapeutic relationship. Sure. When you and I were doing our professional coaching certification course, we did it online through Zoom. And mm -hmm. I don't remember how many people were in the class because it was a number of years ago, but I never felt a disconnect because we were doing it online because we could see the people's faces. They could we could be in um, a separate classroom to be working on things. And so it just felt like we were meshed. And do you find that mm -hmm. that's important that people feel like they're meshing with you? Yeah. And and also, you know, um, in this day of coronavirus and sometimes a little freak out out there, you know, what I find, um, you know, the online therapy, you don't really have to think about, yeah, man, I have a cold. Should I come in? Should I not come in? Or, you know, my kid is sick. I don't want to leave, but they're napping, but I want to do my therapy session. Mm -hmm. Or I don't ever have to not see my clients if I have, you know, a sore throat or this or that. They'll never know because I'm at home. And, you know, so there's kind of those pros of that. And, and no, um, you know, I usually have my cup of coffee or my tea, depending on the time of the day. And, you know, when we connect, I have some clients that, you know, have very unique spots and they love to introduce me to those spots. Like, here's my room and here's my workshop and here's my, you know, like, here's my dog, here's my cat, you know, and it's those little moments that connect you and you feel like you're a part of your client's world, um, you know, in greater ways than I ever felt when they came to my office, you know, because they're coming to this professional place versus I am coming into their home in some ways. Sure. I, you know, I hadn't thought about that because clients come into our office 
and that's that's our space and so we don't get to yeah. see that part of their lives so that's really interesting and we're going to talk more about online therapy and how to find an online therapist. You're listening live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James, and you've been listening to Why Aren't You Over This By Now? Stay tuned to know how to find an online therapist. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales Sales impact your business. Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience Experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Why Aren't You Over This By Now? You're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. And before the break, we were going to ask Alina about how to find an online therapist. So, Alina, will you share what you think is the best way to find an online therapist? So, you know, just to continue from our conversation, uh, Andrea.org um, is a great place to find an EMDR certified, EMDR trained therapist or consultant. And you can also request, you know, in the search engine and see if they provide online therapy. Um, my favorite is psychology today. Psychology Today is everywhere, all over the world, and actually when you Google for a, a therapist with Psychology Today, it will actually show if they offer online therapy or not, and, you know, but I encourage people that even if it, if, and if it doesn't show that, you can still ask the therapist, because chances are, you know, um, they may have an online platform, um, and I think a lot of our recent platforms now um, for billing, for notes, are coming with um, attached video conference, conferencing platforms, you know, so. Sure. And just for the audience sake, EMDRIA stands for EMDR International Association.org. So E-M-D-R-I-A. And I like the psychology today because you can put in your parameters. You can put how far you want it from your home or your zip code. And on the left side of the page, you can select what modalities you want. If you want EMDR, if you want online, you can also select your insurance company and just those therapists that offer that will come up. And I know people have found both of us just by Googling trauma therapist or EMDR. And so that's another way that people can get to both of us or anyone that, you know, in their area. <clears throat> So, Alina, what is something that you have noticed that happens during your online therapy sessions? What, how do you, what have you noticed that's different? So, aside from the things that we talked about, um, uh, a big difference is that I can, in some ways, 
I don't want to say I can hear my clients better, but my listening skills definitely have increased, you know, especially when we do phone sessions. And I have a lot of people that call and ask, they request specifically, I would like to do a phone session, you know, for whatever reason. And so that has definitely um, taught me how to become a better listener because I am not seeing them. You know, I listen to, you know, their breath and how they say things in the tone of their voice, you know, and um, it's been kind of incredible. Um, and also it teaches me um, just new skills and new ways of asking questions um, that I think sometimes, you know, when we see things, we assume, um, you know, um, based on how people uh, you know, make their face or how <laughs> they'll twitch <laughs> or are anxious, but re that is removed in telephone calls. And so I feel like I just have a, a different, unique experience with that. Sure. And I, we do depend on those uh, visual cues, don't we? And so this, I like that you said this is an opportunity to see it differently and really hear a client breathing and noticing. What are they noticing? Uh, that's kind of one of the phrases we use in EMDR. Now, what are you noticing now? And so that clients can help w with that process. And so in doing all of that, how do you actually use EMDR? Is EMDR the only tool you use? You've said coaching, but talk about EMDR as a tool. So, so no, at this point of my career, I have learned many tools. EMDR is my favorite and it's the one I'm certified and best at. But, you know, people are all different. And, you know, research shows that with trauma therapies, um, trauma therapies are actually better when used, uh, when integrated together. So what that means is when you use EMDR with internal family systems and structural dissociation work and parts work and, you know, emotional um, focus therapy. And so when you integrate these different I like to call them art, you know, you allow people to just have a, a, a stronger experience, you know, and, you know, so I'd like to think that I do not conform to any one therapy. Um, I am, you know, good with EMDR because it's what I have been doing and using. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm also brain health certified, so I try to listen to my clients through the lens of brain health, and if I hear, you know, maybe we need to focus on something, if they've been told that, like, I have bipolar, but based on their symptomology and what they're telling me, you know, I can see a, something different through my brain health lens, then, you know, we integrate that into therapy, and, um, Overall, I think that the the more resources that therapists have, you know, the better that they can help their clients, right? Because all of our clients are different. They come with different um, symptoms and set of issues, and every brain, you know, is different. And so, the again, the more resources we have, the better we can help them. But um, I do love EMDR. It is my favorite. Um, I see such rapid relief in the clients that I work with with EMDR, and I definitely encourage, you know, all of my co-therapists to at least peek into the EMDR world if they have not. And I agree, and I use EMDR a lot. I use emotion code, body code work, and I think with the three of those, the reason I like them is because they're quick. And people don't have to be in therapy for a long time. And that's one of the things you and I have talked about in the past is the length of time people should be in therapy. And it's dependent on the issues they've gone through. But I want you to address more of that when we come back. 
You have been listening to Why Aren't You Over This by Now. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. You're uh, listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So be sure to stay tuned about what our thoughts are about being in therapy for a really long time. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veterans folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting Talk on the BBM Global Network. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfection, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James, and you're listening to Why Aren't You Over This By Now? And Alina, before the break, I asked you about being in therapy forever, because I know some people who have talked about that. And so what are your thoughts about being in therapy forever? So, you know, obviously, we do not ever want to put people in a box. But, you know, um, we have seen that people rapidly experience change and relief. You know, um, I have seen people experience relief in just a few sessions. Now, this does not mean that they're done with their work, but it means that they could go home and start feeling better. And so I definitely do believe that feeling better is possible um, and you don't have to wait for it for a long time. And this is why I love trauma-based therapies, you know, that help you process through the emotional charge and move on with your life. So, you know, to answer your question, I do not believe that we should be in therapy forever. But I do believe, and I tell all my clients, that growth and transformation will take you your whole life, just like all of us fellow human beings. Right. And you said something to me the other day that therapy is not a reason to have a friend that you have to pay, which I thought was great because some people go to therapy and they just chit chat with their therapist. And I think the therapist is not doing what's in the best interest of the client because my objective is never to keep people in therapy long. Let's do the work, get to the end and you move on. So I I like that part of it. And some people are addicted to therapy, aren't they? Yeah. And, you know, I'll I'll say this. I guess I don't think anything's wrong with that as long as it's voiced in, 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 you know, what's the goal of therapy. But, you know, we see predominantly um, traumatized humans who – come to us because they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I tell my clients, hey, you know, let's do the best we can and get you to get on with your life happy and making choices. And whenever you need me, I'm here, but you don't need me all the time. 
So it's kind of like having a guide or a support system in your brain knows like if I'm struggling, I can reach out to my therapist. Sure. That's what I was doing with my own life. I didn't like the way I felt. So I kept looking until I finally healed what I needed to heal. And then I didn't need therapy anymore, which was great. And Alina, in the last bit of the show, I wanted to know if you had any last positive thoughts you'd like to leave with the audience. Yeah, I think the the one great thought is that healing is available, um, you know, for everyone. There are so many wonderful therapists um, in the United States of America and whether in person, online, and and I would love to just encourage people that there is someone that you can click with, create a relationship, and who can guide you in your journey towards healing, towards transformation, towards becoming the person you want to be. And so don't give up the search. Sure, don't give up, because both of us have had a lot of client successes. And using EMDR, I had one client that needed four sessions, and then they were done with their work. Others, depending on their trauma, have taken a lot longer, but but there is an end. I always see an end, and, you know, I always encourage my students, do your own work, because if your therapist hasn't done their own work, they don't know what the end looks like. You have to know what the end looks like to know when you've gotten a client to the end of their own work, yeah. right? So true. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, you know. Um, so go on the journey, you know, to the therapist, go on the journey so you can take your clients on a journey and to the whole human race, take the journey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alina, for being on the show. You've been listening to Why Aren't You Over This by Now on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Dr. Kelly James. And next week, we will be sharing about somatic experiencing, a different kind of therapy to use. So looking forward to that next week. You've been listening to Why Aren't You Over This by Now with your host, Kelly James. Kelly says, the truth is that we all have things that happen in our lives. We all have stuff. You can live life the way you want. Tune in each week and discover that there's hope for healing your past beyond traditional talk therapy. Right here on Kelly James's Why Aren't You Over This by Now. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.